I'm Chris Duke and Town Motors. We're tearing down our 1968 Jeep CJ5 called Project Blue Dog. <laughs> Hey, welcome to a fun and exciting new season of Motors TV. We've got a lot of big changes in store for you guys, and all of them are blue. For one thing, my shirt is now blue. Our studio is looking a little bit drab, and we want to bring in a little bit more color. Now, for the past three seasons of Motors, we've been working on a lot of late model vehicles, and we're still going to continue doing that moving forward. But we wanted a new challenge. We want to work on something completely different. And so we thought of doing a rebuild of a classic vehicle. Now, thanks to your guys' input on Facebook and also Twitter, we decided on a Jeep. And what we did is we went out and found an old 1968 Jeep CJ5 in excellent condition, and we got it for a steal. Now it's got the original Buick V6 engine in it. The frame is straight and has very little rust on it, so it's the perfect project vehicle for us to work on. It runs great, but it does need quite a bit of TLC. Now my first truck was named Blue Dog. I couldn't think of a better name for our new project Jeep. So say hello to Blue Dog, our new Jeep project vehicle. We'll be restoring some parts and replacing others. It's gonna be lifted a little bit more, receive larger tires, and turn into a more roadworthy vehicle that's safe and fun to drive. It also happens to be blue, which matches our theme this season. But there's one more thing, and it's perhaps the biggest blue thing of all to hit Motors TV yet. As you know, in order to get the job done right, you need to use the right tools. That's why you're watching Motors. If you don't have the right tools, then an easy job can quickly turn into a nightmare and take up a lot of time. Now, thankfully, the Sears Blue Tool crew has partnered with Motors TV to provide all the tools so that our jobs go smoothly. Now, we've got a lot planned with the Sears Blue Tool crew coming up this season, including product demonstrations. We've got a monthly free tool giveaway at our website, and we're even going to have guest appearances from the crew themselves. Now back to old Blue Dog. In this episode of Motors, we're going to be tearing down our 68 Jeep CJ5 so that we can start restoring and rebuilding various parts of it. And thanks to the Sears Blue Tool crew, everything's going to go a lot easier. Now normally on Motors, we show you how to install parts on your vehicle, but today it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to show you how to remove things. So if you're working on a similar project, these are some of the tools that you might need to use as well. Of course, we've got various sockets and ratchets. I also highly recommend the Craftsman Dog Bone, which gives you eight wrenches in one. We've got a breaker bar, an adjustable wrench, some work gloves, some WD-40 for those stubborn old rusty nuts and bolts. We've got an angle grinder with a cutting wheel if you're going to cut things off. We've got protection for your eyes as well as your ears, an electric impact gun, and if you really get stuck, some air tools. Uh, since we're planning on replacing or showing you how to upgrade many of the parts of our Jeep here, we need to give ourselves some more access and visibility. So we're going to start stripping our Jeep down. We're going to begin by removing our hood, our fenders, removing the roll cage, and probably getting to the bumpers after that. So we're going to take a half inch wrench, and we've got our Craftsman dog bone right here, and we're going to remove these bolts right here. Now another tip on these 40 year old rusty bolts is to grab some WD-40 and give them a spritz first, loosen up that rust. <laughs> or just break it right off like that. That's another way of getting them off if they're old rusty. <laughs> and go in the other end of the dog bone and press that on out, just like Just like that. All right, we got two down. Well, one in a top of another. We got two more to go. And once you've got your bolts out, grab a buddy and get rid of your hood. Now I'm going to use a 7 16 inch socket to remove these hood latches. 
Now in order to get our fenders off, we've got to detach a few things. On the driver's side, we've got this airline. We need to remove that bolt right there. Now we've got this terminal block right there. That's for all of our lighting. We're going to need to remove those two bolts. Then over on the passenger side, we've got a coolant reservoir right here. We're going to need to pop that off. And there's also a bracket right down here for our battery tray. But since we've got to deal with that terminal block over there for the electrical, let's go ahead and detach our negative battery post. Now before we can remove this fender, we need to pop off this diamond plate kick panel, which is just riveted on. So we're going to take our cordless drill and pop off the heads. There it is. <laughs> Since we're going to be moving our Jeep in and out of our garage quite a bit here, we're going to go ahead and tape up this terminal block here so it doesn't accidentally touch something and cause a short. Now, previous owners of our Jeep CJ5 here had a glove box, but it's actually more of just a under the seat box down here. And the way you'd get to it is you just lift up the seat like this in order to get down there. Since we're going to replace these seats anyway, let's go ahead and get them out of here. On this one, all you got to do is tilt it forward and lift it on out. Now, because we're going to be replacing our roll cage with a brand new one, we're going to pop it off. For that, we're going to use our Makita cordless impact driver with a 13 16 socket and an 11 16 combination wrench. Now, to get all these bolts off our roll cage, we're able to use our electric impact gun, except for this very last one, just too rusted on there. So for that, we're gonna to turn to our Craftsman half-inch air impact gun to get that last one off. After removing the 10 big bolts in the back of the roll cage, you've got four on both sides up front here. They're 9 16 so grab a combination wrench, as well as a socket, and pop them out. Now with the help of a buddy, go ahead and remove the roll cage. When we come back from our break, we're going to go ahead and remove those bumpers. Now there are many different ways to cut off a bumper that's been welded onto your frame. We're going to go with this DeWalt angle grinder with a four and a half inch cutting wheel. But before you get started, you need to make sure that you've got all your proper safety equipment on, which includes some earplugs because this will get quite loud, as well as your safety goggles, and of course some gloves.
Now when you're cutting that weld, make sure you just apply a moderate amount of pressure. Like butter. Come on, you. Well, these welds down here on the bottom don't really look that strong. So what we're gonna try doing is just twisting this bumper so we don't have to try to cut those welds off, just like we did up here on the top. So using a pipe wrench or an adjustable wrench like this, just stick it in here and give it a tug and see what happens. Ah, pop right off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the spare tire here so that we can remove the spare tire bracket. Now all that's going to take is a 15 16 socket. I need a buddy! <laughs> For our rear bumper, we're going to try a similar tactic to what we did on the front, but the other way around. We've got all these welds down here on the bottom that we're going to cut off, and once we've done that, they're going to try twisting the bumper up to break the welds that are up on top. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And now it's time for parts, brought to you by the Sears Blue Tool Crew. The Sears Blue Tool Crew offers a variety of tools to make your next project go a whole lot smoother. Case in point, the Street Legal Thunder Gun from Ingersoll Rand. You've probably seen a version of this impact gun on NASCAR for those fast pit stops. It packs a ton of power with five settings from 40 to 400 foot-pounds of torque in both forward or reverse with its NASCAR style buttons, so you can blast through the most difficult nuts and bolts. Now even though we primarily use hand tools on the show, when it really gets stuck, we break out the Thunder Gun. Now wheels and tires are the hardest to keep clean because they always get the dirtiest the quickest. You've got brake dust and road grime, they could just be a pain in the butt to get off. Now thankfully Mother's Polishes makes it easier to clean your wheels and tires. They've got brushes to scrub, polishes for chrome and aluminum wheels, they've got the power balls and the power cones to get into those tight spaces and polish and remove oxidation from your wheel. And for that showroom tire finish, you can complete your wheel and tire makeover with their tire shine. Now check out an upcoming episode of Motors where we show you how to use all this stuff on your vehicle. Hella's number one selling light in the US for over 20 years has been the Rally 500 lights. You see them just about everywhere. And in those 20 years, there have been very few changes, until recently when they updated the look of this popular light. The internal components are all still the same, except for a new freeform reflector to give you a cleaner and brighter beam pattern. They continue to make the traditional Rally 500, which is a proven classic, but to benefit from the new freeform reflector technology, pick up a pair of their Rally 500 FFs. Now you might not have a location to mount those new Hella lights, but lucky for you, NFAB has a solution with their complete line of front and rear lights. 
light bars that are made specifically for most trucks and SUVs. The Enfab light bars are precision welded for strength and durability. They're easy to install, they have a glossy black powder coat finish, and can be ordered in many other colors. Now for more information on all the products that we just mentioned, just head on over to our website and click on the parts button. Check out the Motors TV website to watch all of your favorite episodes and more, and talk with other viewers online in our popular forums area. Catch the latest news and information surrounding the show, as well as the entire automotive industry. Take Motors with you on the road with our free app available for the iPhone and iPod Touch, and win free parts by entering in our monthly giveaway. It's all right here at www.motors.tv. I'm here now at the fabulous Ford's Forever Show in Southern California to check out their 25th annual show. There's a lot of Ford's cars, trucks, Broncos, everything here except for this one. What's up with that? The fabulous Ford's Forever Car Show is an annual event that takes place at the Knott's Berry Farm theme park in Buena Vista, California. This year, the 25th annual event was held on April 25th, 2010. Over 2,000 Ford vehicles were detailed to show quality, ranging from 1903 to 2010, and they're judged in 50 different classes for every Ford car, truck, and hot rod out there. Letters, brought to you by truckblog.com. Hey guys, welcome to Letters. It's my favorite part of the show where I get to answer your questions right here on the show. Now before we get started on these, I want to tell you about something very exciting that's going on at the website. Because of our partnership with the Sears Blue Tool crew, we're giving away tools every month through the website. So just visit our website and click on that free tools giveaway button and put in your information. Now here's our first letter. Stephen from California writes, I've got a 2002 Ford F-150 long bed. I'm looking for new bed rail caps and a new tailgate cap. Ford trucks look ugly without the bed caps and I can't find one anywhere. I've looked at numerous websites, what can I do? Well, Steven, there's two manufacturers that I know of that make bed rail caps for Ford trucks. That's DZ and Street Scene. Now, if they don't make one, I think they do. Just check Google and uh, see what comes up. But you might also just want to go to your local Ford parts dealer if you can't find the aftermarket or you can also hit up an auction site. Now, Mitchell from Oregon writes, Hey Chris, my friends and I have a 1999 Ford F-250 with a 5.4 Triton. It currently has 190,000 miles. It has a warped head gasket, and we've ordered a replacement, and we're not too comfortable with taking the engine apart. Do you have any idea where we could take it while still trying to save money? We got a price estimate from our local auto mechanics, and he says it's gonna cost about 1,800 bucks, and I just about had a heart attack. Any advice would be great. Thanks for your time, bud. Well, the best thing to do is to find a shop that you trust because just about all the shops should charge you the same number of labor hours. There's an estimate book that they go by that tells them roughly how many hours that they should be charging for a job. So find a shop that you trust and you might want to get a couple estimates from a couple different shops. Billy Stout from Minnesota writes, Hey Chris, I love the show and the F-150. So I have my own 2000 F-150 and I love it. I was wondering if you're going to do an off-road light, do it yourself, because when I installed mine, it took a while to figure out how to do all the wiring and setup. It might be nice for other guys to see how it's done. But hey, keep up with the show. I love it. Billy. 
Well, hey, Billy, uh, one of the next episodes that we've got coming up is actually showing you how to install and do the wiring on off-road, actually auxiliary lights on two different trucks. So stay tuned for uh, one of the next episodes. It might be the very next one. And check that out. It shows you the step-by-step -step on it all. Adam wrote in and said, hey, Chris, I've got a 96 Lincoln Mark 8, and the headlights are fogged over to the point of being unrepairable. I've looked all over for new headlights and can't find anything. Could you please be of some assistance? Thanks. By the way, Motors is my favorite show. Well, thanks, Adam. Now, if your headlights can be repaired, if they're just fogged over, then check out Mother's Headlight Restoration Kit. We've got an upcoming Mother's episode where we're going to show you how to detail your vehicle. And this is part of what we're going to show you, the step-by-step -step on how to bring those headlights back to life, if they can be. But if, as you say, it's unrepairable, then the best thing to do is to uh, get some new ones. Now, we did do a little bit of searching online, and what we found is that there aren't any actual big retailers that sell those. So you're going to have to hit the online auction sites like eBay. We actually did find some, so just go search for it and pick up a pair. Gary Bircher from Utah wrote in, said, hey, on your show about welding, you showed a helmet that had been airbrushed by someone in Utah. Could you please give me their web address? Love your show. Well, Gary, it was actually airbrushed by an artist named Barbara Luck from Rippin Design. She did an incredible job on this thing. I sent her a black blank helmet, and she did all this incredible artwork on it. She nailed the skulls, the lightning bolts, all the color, the flames, and even got the motor's logo right on the front. Now, for more information on Rippin Designs, just head on over to our website, look for this episode, and we'll have a link right to hers. And finally, Brian in Colorado writes in and says, Hi Chris, keep up the great work and best of luck with your future episodes. You're doing a great job and have helped this weekend gearhead perform a lot of mods to my 2008 Bullet. Well, thanks a lot, Brian. That's what this show is all about, giving you all the information and the step-by-step -step so you can do everything yourself and save a ton of money. Now, if you'd like to have your question answered on the show, just head on over to our website. You can submit your question there. And you can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com and twitter.com slash motors. Well, that completes the first stage of our teardown of old Blue Dog. Now, for more episodes of Motors or to find out more about the tools that we used in today's episode from the Sears Blue Tool crew, just head on over to our website. Now, there's one more thing that we got to do. We got to pop off this window. All we got to do is lean it forward and lift right on out. Catch you next week on Motors. Are you ready? This is what I do. This is, this is me. This is raw. This is what I do. Should I not do this? Mmm, good. Try it. Mmm, <laughs> 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 well done. Bad, well If you really get stuck, some air tools. Oh, yeah. We just need the Benford 2000 cutting wheel.